Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of All's Fans. I'm your host, Bull. We got some really good news this morning from Steve Wilt Fong. He posted this message right here on the Go Vols 24-7 message board saying that things could not be going better for Tennessee with Lance Hurd. Now, for those of y'all who don't know who Steve Wilt Fong is, he's the go-to for crystal balls. Pretty much whenever he says that a player is going somewhere, that's where they end up at. He's got like a 98% uh, you know, rating whenever it comes to that. So that's really good news for those of y'all who was anxious about what's going on with Lance Hurd. We know that he's in the boat over here. He just has to come out and officially announce. And it also sounds like he has maybe like some family issues or something. I think one of his close friends passed away here recently. So he's kind of dealing with that. But Whoever he has on his team to handle the business side of this, they are still handling it. And, you know, I think that that Hayes Fawcett edit or graphic, you know, I don't know what these kids are calling it these days. That will be coming out here shortly because usually whenever Steve posts something like this, like whenever he comes out and says something like this, there is usually something that comes out publicly uh, pretty shortly thereafter. So keep a close eye out for that. And we also got some more news this morning with a tweet from Marcus Harris. That's one of our top wide receiver prospects in the class of 2025, saying that he will be attending Tennessee's junior day on the 20th coming up this weekend. Now, we don't know if that junior day is still going to happen. OK, obviously, there's a whole lot of snow and, you know, bad weather uh, up in Knoxville right now. So. We'll see if they continue to have that junior day. I'm not 100% sure on it as of this point, but I am gonna put up this graphic right here just to show you some of Tennessee's top prospects in the class of 2025. Not quite sure who all is gonna make it, but we should be able to get in a pretty solid number of our top prospects on this junior day in the class of 2025. All right, and for those of y'all who don't know what a junior day is, it's basically an opportunity for the prospects in the upcoming class to come on campus, do a tour with their family members, get to meet the staff, uh, you know, the academic people, ask all the questions that they want about the university that they are, uh, you know, considering going to. And also it's a good opportunity to meet some other players that could potentially be joining them in the 2025 class. So hopefully we can get a good number of our top prospects in and, uh, you know, we can close out on some of these guys. All right, and we also got this nugget right here from ESPN's Matt Miller saying that he spoke to an AFC scout that believes that if James Pierce would enter into this year's draft, he would be the number one defensive player taken. That is huge news because we have got to be able to bring in some players and produce them into NFL draft picks. That's probably the biggest thing that these young prospects are looking for in a school. And that's what the Georgias and the Alabamas have had over us, I would say, for maybe like the past decade or so. They've done a much better job at that. And then they've also been winning programs. That's what these guys want. And, you know, we know with Coach Saban stepping down that Alabama's going to take a step back. Okay, we've seen that mass exodus of players leaving Alabama, but where are a lot of those players going to? It's Georgia. So all of the celebration, I definitely get it. But I think some of y'all are missing the point that these guys aren't coming to Tennessee whenever they're leaving Alabama. They're going to other ACC schools or, you know, even worse, they're going straight to Georgia. So that is a big, big problem. And Tennessee's going to have to change some things up, you know, at, at least from where I'm sitting at. Right. OK, because I don't know exactly what's going on up there on campus, but it just seems like we're going to have to do something different to go out and get some better talent to be able to compete with Georgia because I can tell you this y'all thought that Nick Saban's reign of terror was bad for the past 17 seasons well Kirby Smart could do even worse because usually Georgia has a lot more talent than Alabama does and also you know Nick Saban is ha was having to compete versus Auburn for a lot of those Alabama players and we all know that it pretty much starts in state with the talent that you want to build your program with so we're not in the best position right now. Okay, and I'm gonna pull up some graphics right here so that y'all can clearly understand what the talent level difference is from state to state, okay? From Alabama to Georgia to Tennessee. All right, so in 2023, the state of Alabama had four or five stars and 18 four stars. Alabama ended up with the number one class. Georgia had two five stars and 34 four stars. They ended up with the number two class. All right, and Tennessee didn't have any five stars. They had 10 four stars, but we ended up with the number 10 recruiting class. Now on to 2024, Alabama had five five stars, 24 stars, and they ended up with the number two class. And Georgia had six five stars and 52 four stars that ended up with the number one class that season. And Tennessee didn't have any five stars, but we had nine four stars and we ended up with the number 13 class. 
Now, as we fast forward to 2025, Alabama right now has two five stars and 15 four stars. Georgia has six five stars and 32 four stars. Tennessee has one five star and 10 four stars. But I can tell you right now, George Mack was the only five star in Tennessee. He might end up getting bumped down to a four star because Juju Lewis did reclass to 2025 and he might take that last five star spot and it could end up bumping George Mack down to a four star. All right, now for 2026, Alabama currently has two five stars and three four stars. Georgia has four five stars and five four stars and Tennessee has one five star and one four star. Now, obviously this is going to change as more of these players get grades. This is, you know, definitely going to look a lot different, but it's probably going to look very similar to what it did, you know, for the previous three seasons. All right, so looking at those numbers, I hope that y'all can understand how big of a difference there is with the in-state talent from Tennessee to Georgia to Alabama, okay? Tennessee might have, you know, anywhere between eight to possibly 15 blue chip players every single season, and Georgia has like 50 or 60 every single season. It looks like Alabama usually has somewhere uh, close to like 40 every year. But that just goes to show you, number one, that's why those programs are consistently, uh, you know, top two. That and obviously, as we've talked about, they are NFL factories and they are winning programs. Now, Tennessee has actually done a really good job just considering that there's not a whole lot of in-state talent for us to choose from. We have to be very heavy in getting players from Georgia, getting players from Alabama, South Carolina, uh, you know, Texas, places like that. Like We've just got to do a really good job with that. And I think that this staff has done a pretty good job of it so far but i'm here to tell y'all man we've got to turn up a couple more notches because with Saban stepping down now you know most of the talent that was going to alabama is going to go to georgia because it's the same types of players they all want the exact same things and georgia is going to be dominant uh in both of those categories moving forward unless tennessee can come out i would say this season and find a way to win we've got to make the playoffs and if we could somehow win a national championship with what we have right now currently, then we actually would have a pretty good chance to be able to steal more and more players from the state of Georgia. Now, Georgia can't take everyone, uh, you know, that's in state just because it's too many players, but I think they are kind of getting to a point where they can hand select whoever they want in the state. And honestly speaking, there's so much talent here in Georgia that they don't even have to leave this state. They could pretty much just live in the state and never even have to travel, but they haven't done it yet. And I've talked about it. I feel like that staff has left some meat on the bone but that gap, it really, I promise y'all, it is closing drastically. So for those of y'all that are just so, so happy about Alabama, you know, losing Saban and losing all of these players right now, keep in mind that Saban was the only coach who could beat Kirby Smart, and he was taking away a good amount of those players. So now we've got to try to close that gap some by, you know, being a lot more heavy out on the road. And we've heard several times that there's coaches on the staff that don't like doing that. Think that it might be time to cut ties with those guys we also have to take a look at how good are the coaches on this staff at you know getting these guys ready to play i think that we can look at several coaches and say that they haven't done a very good job as far as we can see and if there are guys that you know have been ready to play and we haven't played them you know I, again i think that that's shame on this staff we've got to put guys out there if they're ready to play something that we hear from coach Saban or that we've heard from coach Saban that we hear from Kirby Smart is that no positions are promised. I think that we've got to start to implement that a lot more with our staff, okay? Talked about this yesterday. Kirby Smart already has a really good staff. He goes out and hires coach T-Rob from Alabama all for the sole purpose of getting Caleb Downs. How do we know that? Because he was upgraded to a co-defensive coordinator and he's also the safeties coach. So Kirby wanted to do whatever he could to make sure that he got T-Rob so that he can get Caleb Downs. We're not really doing any of that, okay? Now, I love the fact that Coach Heupel is loyal to his guys, but man, I mean, we've got to try to upgrade everywhere, and I don't care where it is. I just don't see a whole lot of that dog mindset from Coach Heupel. I don't see it from most of this staff, and if we don't pick that up, if we don't go out and find some guys that are, you know, dog-like, we are going to really start to fall behind and I honestly think that Georgia could go on more of a reign of terror than what we saw from Colt Saban. So we've got to be very careful, man. And obviously the biggest thing that Tennessee needs to be trying to do is being very heavy in that transfer portal. 
with the way that college football is set up right now with all of these moving pieces, uh, you know, Georgia stockpiling blue chip players. We know that a lot of the guys that they already have on their roster, they're going to start to into that transfer portal as well. Now, we won't be able to get any this season, but next season, once, uh, you know, the first portal window opens up, we can get some of those guys. As much as I hate to say this, we're going to start doing a little bit more tampering because we're seeing everyone else doing it. We're going to have to tamper. We're going to have to continue to talk to guys, whether they're playing for somebody else or not. It's some type of a way, okay? We have got to figure that out because, you know, again, Georgia's been doing it. Texas, they're definitely doing it. Uh, Ole Miss is doing it. Pretty much everyone is. So we've got to kind of get with the times and do a lot more of that so that whenever these guys do enter into the portal, Tennessee can be on the front of their minds because it's going to take a whole lot of that for us to be able to catch up with the amount of talent that Georgia is going to be able to put out on the field. Uh, and then, you know, really, there's still a big gap, I feel like, for, uh, you know, Tennessee versus a lot of these other programs. We've got to catch up. Now, one of the things that I will say about Georgia They've always been talented, okay? Georgia has had talented rosters for the past 20 years. I mean, they've been at least top five for the past 20 years. They only have two national championships to show for that. So I think that there is a problem with the coaching, especially with Kirby Smart. He's really good at going out and getting these players, uh, you know, I would say maybe motivating them, teaching them how to play fundamentally sound, teaching them how to play tough, you know, like that old school mindset of, hey, we're going to try to knock you out, you know, bully ball, all that good stuff. I think he's really good at that, but X's and O's, he's not good at that. And we can out coach him from that perspective. I think that Coach Heifel, you know, has found some ways to have some success versus Georgia. We just have to increase what we have, especially in the front sevens on both sides of the football. So if we can do that, if we can be very, very heavy and doing our best to find blue chip caliber players uh, on both fronts, then I think that we can, you know, kind of close the gap in being able to beat Georgia a lot sooner than what people are thinking we can. And I do think that Tennessee has a good chance with the current roster this season to be able to beat Georgia in Athens. Now, we'll see if everything comes together, but we are anticipating that it will. Nico obviously is special. We've got a very short window to work with him, and we've got to put all of our chips on the table. And we've got to do whatever it takes to get as many good players, uh, as many good coaches as we possibly can and hope that we can, you know, again, be able to close that gap on the University of Georgia. But that's it for this video. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.